Now, on a related matter, as I've said for months, Congress also has a responsibility to help our nation meet a growing network of serious threats from adversaries like Russia, China, and Iran. As one recent analysis put it, each of these revisionist states aids the others in their goals to subvert or destroy democratic nations. Just consider the links that authoritarians in Beijing and terror sponsors in Tehran are going to prop up Putin's brutal war in Ukraine. The PRC has massively ramped up its purchases of Russian energy to help Moscow subvert Western sanctions. And Chinese materials are helping produce 80 million rounds of ammunition for Russian invaders. Meanwhile, Iran is providing maintenance for Russian aircraft that are subject to U.S. sanctions. And Iranian personnel are on Russian soil training Putin's forces to use their lethal kamikaze drones. So, Madam President, our adversaries are showing us by their actions that they're heavily invested in Russia's war in Ukraine. They clearly understand that their own ability to threaten America and the West is tied directly to what's happening in Eastern Europe. Our allies, our allies understand this reality as well. It's why allies from Japan to Poland are making massive new commitments to modernizing their own defenses and expanding their defense industrial bases. This is good news for burden sharing and for collective security. In some cases, like Germany, our allies' investments since Russia's escalation in Ukraine mark a long overdue departure from years of neglect for hard power. Today, as Berlin continues to pour new resources into, uh, into its own military strength, our German allies have also announced a plan to double, double their direct military aid to Ukraine in the coming year. Of course, some of our European allies have never had the luxury of taking a holiday from history. For example, since the beginning of Russia's escalation, our NATO ally, Estonia, has allocated a nearly unparalleled share of its GDP in direct assistance. Estonians know that Vladimir Putin does not intend to stop at Kyiv. America's friends understand that failing to check Putin's aggression in Europe would have far-reaching consequences. So do our biggest adversaries. We cannot afford to neglect this reality ourselves, and we cannot deny the clear ways that America's support for Ukraine is driving our growing readiness to face other threats. The emergency investments we've made in the U.S. defense industrial base as a result of Russia's war on Ukraine or doubling production capacity to 155 millimeter artillery rounds. They're driving a 40% increase in production of long range precision fires and nearly doubled capacity for air to air missiles. <coughs> Denying the obvious connections between the threats we face can't obscure the fact that the benefits of investments in Western strength are also connected. Expanding our defense industrial bases means making America and our allies stronger from Europe to the Middle East to the Indo-Pacific. Most important thing, anyone who is truly concerned about growing threats from China or Iran can do is support investments in American military capabilities in our defense industrial base. That it includes both supplemental resources and full-year defense appropriations. If we fail to make these steps, we won't just be starving our friends and allies, but our own military. Threats we face are not divisible, but neither is the progress we're making toward restoring America's strength.